To access the settings for your device, tap on the settings icon. In the settings menu, the three options you will use to customize sounds, brightness, and wallpaper are grouped together as shown here. Tapping on sound will display this menu. The options are grouped into two categories, silent and ring. As stated before, if the ring silent switch is showing red, the phone is on silent, whereas if silver is showing, the ringer is active. Under both, you have the option to turn on or off the vibrate feature. Under ring, you're able to change the ringer volume using the slider or by using the volume buttons. You can also change the default ringtone. Tapping on this option will display a list of all ringtones on the phone. Select the ringtone you want to use for your default ringtone, and tap on the sounds icon to return to the menu. Setting the default text message tone is done the same way. This group of settings will turn on or off chimes for specific notifications. Tapping on settings will return you to the settings menu. Opening the brightness settings, you can set a static brightness or turn auto brightness on or off. You can see when auto brightness is on, it will disable the static brightness settings. The final option in this grouping is wallpaper. There are two wallpapers set for your device. The first is on the lock screen and the second is on your home page. These two can show different wallpapers. You have two options to select images from, wallpaper images and camera roll. Selecting either shows thumbnails. Tapping on any thumbnail will give you a larger preview and tapping the set button, you can choose to set it for the lock screen, the home screen, or both. Here I'm setting this image for the lock screen and the next one I'll set for the home screen. Tapping the back buttons in the top right corner will return you to this screen displaying a preview of the changes you have made. As you can see, the lock screen and background images are immediately set. If you haven't already set up your App Store account, this will need to be done before you can download any applications. Opening the settings menu and selecting store will let you sign in to an existing account or create a new one. Here I'll be creating a new account. The first option is to confirm your country. Once this is correct, tap on the next button in the bottom right corner. The phone will now take you through the terms and conditions. Once you've read through these, tap on the Agree icon and tap Agree again when prompted to confirm. Next, you'll have to enter an existing email address, which will become your Apple ID. Enter your password, security question, and date of birth, 
and you can choose to receive emails about new releases and special offers. Once this has all been completed, hit Next and this screen will appear. Here you'll enter your billing information, including credit card number, billing address, and a phone number. Once you have set up your account, it's time to dive into the App Store. Along the bottom are five options that assist in finding applications. Featured, Categories, Top 25, Search, and Updates. Across the top are sub-options that change based on which main option you select along the bottom. With the featured category selected, the three options along the top are New, What's Hot, and Genius. If you turn on the Genius option, iPhone will recommend applications you'll love based on the apps you have already downloaded. Under the Categories option, you're able to find every application on the market grouped into categories of their nature. Categories include business, entertainment, education, sports, productivity, and many more. The top 25 displays the top 25 paid, free, and grossing applications. This is a good place to check for apps that others rate highly. Under the search option, you're able to search by application or developer's name. Here I search for Facebook. Matches are displayed by relevance, and the price for each application is listed down the right side of the screen. Tapping on any application will launch the info page for it. Here you'll find the application's name and developer, the current rating and number of ratings, as well as the price. Below this information, you'll find a basic description of the app. Scrolling down, you can view screenshots of the application. Below the screenshots, you can click this button to read and write reviews. Tapping on Tell a Friend will let you share the application or you can report a problem. To download the application, tap on the icon that displays its price. If it's a free application, the icon will immediately prompt you to install, whereas if it's a paid application, the icon will prompt you to buy now. When you download an application, if you haven't signed in already, you'll be prompted to do so. Once you've entered your Apple ID and the password, the app will begin to download on the home screen and you can track its progress via the status bar. Once the app has finished downloading, the status bar will disappear and the application will appear at full brightness. You can rearrange the icons on your home screen by pressing and holding on the icon you want to move until all icons begin to shake. You can now drag and drop any icon you wish to move, pressing the home button to finalize any changes. To remove an application, press and hold until the icon begins to shake and press the X in the top left corner of the app you want to delete. After you tap X, this confirmation window will appear. Press Delete to confirm and the Home button to finalize your changes. Not all applications will have an X on them. Apps without the X are applications that came on the phone and cannot be removed. If there are updates available for any of your applications, this symbol will appear on the App Store icon. This number reflects the total number of updates available. In this case, we have one update available. Opening the App Store, select the Updates button from the bottom. 
Displayed will be each application with an update available, and you can choose to update individually, or you can tap the Update All icon in the top right corner. Selecting an application, tap on the Update icon to install the update, and below you can find a list of what has changed. Again, you will need to enter your Apple ID and or password to install the update. Once the update has begun installing, it will display the status bar just like when the application was initially downloaded. Once you have downloaded some applications on your phone, you will want to organize them to your liking. Out of the box, the phone has three home screens. You're able to create new home screens, which you can customize by pressing and holding on an icon until they begin to shake and dragging the icon to the edge of the screen. The phone will shift to the next home screen, or if there isn't another screen, iPhone will automatically create one. You can see here the number of dots representing the home screens has changed from 3 to 4. If you have not placed anything on the new window, it will automatically delete itself when the changes are finalized. Every time you drag an icon out to the newly created screen, another home screen will be added. Again, pressing the home button finalizes any changes. You can also group together icons into folders. By dragging and dropping an icon onto another, a folder is created containing both applications. You're able to create custom names for the folders and drop as many applications into them as you'd like. Here I've named this photo folder. Tapping on a blank portion of the screen will return you to this standard view. To remove an icon from a folder, first open the folder, then touch and hold on the icon you want to move and it will drop back into the home screen. Removing all applications from a folder, as shown here, will automatically delete the folder. On the iPhone 4, you're able to link multiple email accounts to your phone. The first time you tap on the mail icon, you'll see this page, which will assist you in setting up your email account. Here you can select from a Microsoft Exchange email, Mobile Me, Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, and others. Here I'll be setting up a Gmail account. Tapping on the Gmail symbol, this page will open with some basic information to set up your account, including your name, email address, password, and description. Once you've entered all this information, tap the next icon in the top right corner. The device will verify your information. As long as all of your information is correct, you will see this screen giving you options to sync different elements of your Gmail account. Once you've set everything how you like it, tap the save icon. The device will finalize the configuration of the sync and then take you to your inbox. Returning to your home screen, you can see displayed on the mail icon the number of unread messages you have in your inbox. Opening your inbox, any unread messages will have a blue dot next to them, 